these days needs to be smart. No one wants a dumb just about anything anymore, right? But in order to get the smarts into our IoT edge devices, we need machine learning. But machine learning is hard to implement, and not everyone has a PhD in ML. So we're stuck, right? Actually, no. What if I told you that even your average embedded engineer can get started with a machine learning design today that is easy to implement and accurate? Oh, yeah, it's true. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Yes, today we are talking about a machine learning approach that does not require a deep knowledge of machine learning, is low power, includes an expertise in communication and security, and is easy to implement. Sounds great, right? My guest today is Jan LeFaux from Microchip, and we're chatting all about machine learning with MCUs and MPUs. We take a closer look at the benefits of a supervised learning approach to machine learning, what Microchip's machine learning design flow looks like, and how you can get started doing a variety of cool projects using Microchip's machine learning evaluation kits. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. Hi, Jan. Thank you so much for joining me. Pleasure to be here. Okay, so we're talking about machine learning today. But before we get into the details, Jan, can you give us some background? What is pushing this trend toward machine learning today? What's happening is everybody has sensor connected and creating data every day, all day but there's up to almost 99% of the sensor data which are discarded today. So people are thinking, what can I do with that? You know, it's a waste of time of me creating all this data and not using it. The other piece of the puzzle is that there's new algorithm developed by partners, by a lot of people out there, you know, coming from the Tiny ML Foundation, where they are creating new type of models which can run on smaller devices like, you know, 32-bit MCUs. So I think the market is ready now based on all these foundations there, we have data, we have models, and we have good MCU. So now it's time to do something with all of these. So Jan, why do you think people want to implement machine learning? Machine learning, as, as I mentioned, everybody has tons of data now. And machine learning is really good at crunching data very quickly and find you know, outliers or anomalies in this flow of data. So now that we have that, we can create algorithms which are much more efficient in the prediction than it is until now. In Microchip here, we are focusing more on what we call the supervised learning. So it's a subset of machine learning. It's basically, for example, if you look at the picture here, we're going to you know, train a model to recognize Apple by showing him pictures of Apple, say, this is a picture of Apple, and they will train them. And then next time you show a new picture of an Apple, he will know that it's an Apple. So that's why we say supervised learning, we tell him what we're going to train him with. That makes sense. Now, Jan, can we walk through a typical machine learning workflow? What steps are we really talking about here? So this step, are, yes. So this is a very key point because it's a little bit different than what people are used to do now where they write, you know, standard rules-based algorithm. First thing, you have to collect the data. So it's basically a sensor connected to, you know, capture vibration, to capture images, sounds, things like that. So you have raw material here. Then you can go to the next step, which is data cleaning, because remember that we're going to teach the model or to train the model with this data. We have to tell him what it is. Then you move to the training side of it. And then once you have the trained model, you can evaluate the model with some new data that you're going to show it. And then once you're happy with that, you move to the implementation in the chip to run into your application. So these are the five main steps of any machine learning workflow, whatever the application is. Okay, Jan, so what about rules-based algorithms? How does machine learning compare to that approach? So rules-based versus machine learning is the development time. So here we are talking days versus months. So if you go back to the example I had at the beginning with the Apple, so now let's say you want to add bananas to your algorithm. So what you will do is you will take 100 pictures of bananas that you can find anywhere, and you're going to retrain your model to recognize bananas. That could be, that's a few days of work max. 
Imagine now if you want to create a rules base and now you have to go back to say, if it's yellow, if it's curvy, if it's about 10 inches long, thing like that, that's a very complex algorithm to write to recognize bananas. So this will take months to add bananas. And every time you want to add a new picture of oranges, for instance, then you will go again through months of development, where with machine learning, you're talking about days. The other big thing here is I mentioned that machine learning can find you know, anomalies and outliers and find hidden patterns within the data flow. So your know, human is looking at the data and trying to find a logic here to write the algorithm with the if, else, and rules. Machine learning will find something that the human eyes cannot see. And that's huge because that gives us way more possibilities of what we can do. And the other thing is we can improve the model locally by doing local learning. So you want to decrease, for example, false positive or negatives. Let's say you have a fridge and your fridge has, you know, you're looking at the compressor and you're detecting the vibration to understand if the fridge is working normally or if something is off. Maybe your fridge is a little bit different than your neighbor fridge because one screw has not been torqued properly or something like that. That doesn't mean that your fridge is not working, but now the model is going to learn from your fridge and not the neighbor how yours works. And then we will decrease the false positive and not saying, okay, the fridge is broken where your fridge is actually working perfectly. That's a good thing. There's some challenges as well with machine learning. First is to learn the new flow as we just discussed. And you need data. So as I mentioned, everybody has data today. They don't know what to do with it. But you need to clean it. You need to label it. You need to have a good set of data and you have to have enough data or things like that. So this is where on better designer things, for example, we have to learn a little bit more about that piece of the flow. For some complex application like on smart embedded vision or sound recognition, it could be a little bit complex to develop the right model. So in that case, you may need some data scientists or ML expertise. And because we are talking about the edge, one big thing is the size of the model that you're going to carry in your MCU. So the memory footprint of machine learning you know, models is a little bit bigger than rules-based algorithm. But you know, I say with the tiny ML foundation and everybody working on that, the gap is getting smaller and smaller. That makes sense. Now, Jan, machine learning is particularly powerful for edge computing applications, right? Until today, I would say everybody was thinking about the cloud for machine learning. That's, that's a big thing is you push data to the cloud, it does their magic, and it pushed back some information. We think it has some you know, major problems here eh, that now with the number of nodes, we're talking about billions of nodes everywhere, the need for communication is becoming just too big. So that's why we have 5G, that's why we have you know, fast internet and things like that. So now if we can do things locally, and because of what we're doing, we are enabling ML at the edge, we can reduce the cost as well as communication because that's what the cloud provider is charging you by volume of data you're sending it. So if we can do it locally, you're going to reduce the cost. At the same time, you also, you know, low power. Everything has to be green today. Everybody is trying to, to hit the lowest power they can. So you understand that if you don't have to send data, a big flow of data to the cloud in almost real time, you will save a lot of power. Maybe now you will just send every minute or every hour just the status of everything is okay or something is broken now, you may need to check it. On top of that, in some applications, there's no options for communication. You can be remote in the middle of the forest somewhere, or you can do underground for mining application. So doing things at the edge is mandatory, I would say. One big thing as well, privacy and security. I think everybody is not happy about sharing data. So same thing, if the data is not leaving the edge, that's even better for, I say, not sharing your data and not getting hacked. Additionally to that, if you do things at the edge, you go faster because you don't have that communication lag between the cloud and the edge. So it means faster response time for some application, but for other one, it means safety operation. So think about maybe you know, autonomous driving. So you have a, a sensor and it needs to take a decision as fast as it can. So you don't want to rely on a communication, you know, 5G, for instance, with the cloud to take a decision to know if the car should stop or not. You want to have that reaction time as short as possible. And I already mentioned the local learning to really improve the performance of the product. Okay, so Jan, what kind of machine learning solutions does Microchip offer? So we have many solutions. So we have MCU-based solution, we have MPU, we have FPGA. And as I'm showing here, we're also in machine learning workstations, servers, or big data centers. 
where here we have PCI switches, which enables connection between GPUs or very fast memory as well. Regarding MCU and MPU, what we are targeting is more smart embedded vision. So here it's the obvious face recognition, face detection, maybe mask detection, very popular lately, but also to recognize, for example, at the factory, if a defect is on the product. So we see that on PCB electronic, for instance, you have a camera checking that everything is correct. That can save a lot of money at the end on the factory side. The biggest market we see today as well is the smart predictive maintenance, where here you are basically monitoring your system to understand when it will need to be serviced. Again, it's a cost-driven solution here for our customers. And smart human machine interface is one we see also in more of the automotive side and as well as industrial. It's where you have a touch screen and you can recognize specific gesture based on maybe your brand or the market you're addressing, but also with sound. For example, you can talk to the machine. So I'm not talking about Alexa or Siri or Google type of products, but maybe to navigate into menus, you know, say up, down, left, right, thing like that, that could also help you increase the safety of using the machine. That makes sense. Now, Jan, can we take a closer look at the MCUs and MPUs for machine learning? Who would this type of approach be good for? So Microchip is the embedded solution provider and leader. Our goal, I would say, is to offer the option to use machine learning to every embedded designers. These are the customer we are talking all day long. So we want to make sure that it does not require a deep knowledge of machine learning, a PhD in machine learning or something like that. And also, it can be used on any microchip MCU or MPU based on Cortex ARM core. So this also gives you know, embedded designers the choice of which hardware they want to use. And basically, any application using a sensor and creating data should look at implementing machine learning to really improve the performance of our product. Okay, so Jan, what do you think are the benefits of this kind of machine learning approach? From the microchip point of view, it's really the easiness of that. Again, we are targeting embedded designer, so we want that complete flow to be within microchip tool, which is called MPLAB, that's on our, our IDE. So we have integrated partner solution within our IDE, and we say we want that to be accessible to any embedded designer. On top of that, we are offering a very wide portfolio. We have thousands of different flavor of our MCU and MPU. So you can maybe run the machine learning algorithm or you can integrate the complete application within one chip. This is based on the customer choice. We mentioned that everybody is looking at low power and microchip is low power leader for, for years as well. And most of the time you have some communication and some type of security. So we have expertise in these domains. And to also to help our customer to get up and running as fast as we can, we offer technical support in all the main regions. Okay, great. Now, Jan, a lot of machine learning design flows involve other technology partners, right? What does that kind of design flow look like? We want the design flow to be as easy as possible and to be easy, again, for embedded designers. So what we have created is within MPLAB, which is the microchip IDE, a special plugin to be able to create your own data set. The goal here is because our customers are designing unique products most of the time, they cannot use a data set that you can find on the web. So going back to the Apple, you know, you go on Google and you can find millions of pictures of Apple. This is not true for most of the application. They have to create their own data set. So that's why we made that easy. And once you have done that, you can upload this data to one of our partners. So we're working with three main ones, which is SenseML, Edge Impulse, and Motion Gestures. What they do is they help you pick the right model based on your data set, train your model, and then what you get back is a library or source code that you integrate back into your project. And then you compile, and then you can run it on your MCU locally. So it's a complete flow from A to Z, I would say, that we're offering. Fantastic. Now, Jan, as we have talked about in previous Chalk Talks, Machine learning is also a big trend in Industry 4.0 these days, and especially in industrial maintenance, right? Yes. Predictive maintenance, I think, is one of the hot topics. As I said here, is to create the maintenance plan as needed based on real data. Up to now, people were either doing reactive, so you fix what is broken, which is not very good because it will always break when you don't need that to break. Or you use preventive maintenance, which is basically you change parts just in case you know, it's going to break. You don't know that. 
that's pretty expensive as well. The other aspect of that is you don't know when something is going to break, so you cannot really schedule downtimes. And that's a big thing, for example, for, for people with factory. They want to be able to schedule downtime. So to help with that, we have created some projects people can really start from. This one is what we call the fan condition monitoring. So basically, it's a small demo board that you put on your fan to detect that. First, you can detect the speed of the fan, which is pretty useful, but also detect any anomalies. In that example, we can detect something tapping on the fan. Or you can detect, for example, that a bearing is going bad, or maybe the flow is blocked for some reason. And that's where it's very useful because you can really adapt that algorithm to that specific fan and pull the flag when something is off. Every project I'm going to present here are fully available on our website called microchipdeveloper.com. And so it's very easy to start with. The other one we have done, which is kind of the same idea here, is, but we try to make it a little bit more fun, is how do we move a dumbbell to be smart? So same thing, we attach the same board that we did on the fan, and now here it can recognize movement. So the idea here is, was more to show fitness equipment, for instance, to say, how many bicep curls did you do? You cannot cheat because it will be recognized by the machine, but it can also recognize if, if it has been done correctly, which could be useful for fitness, but you know, physical therapy, you do that at home, now you can make sure that what you're doing is correct. But back to predictive maintenance, that could be also very interesting for garage door opener type of application to make sure that your door is moving correctly. And if it's starting to move sideways or something like that, you can detect it. And then you send someone to service it instead of waiting for that to break. And then you have to change the whole system. It can also be very useful in type of you know, safety equipment. So let's say you have a big equipment moving. You want to make sure that same thing, it's moving correctly and freely. And if something is off, you want to shut it off pretty quickly. Again, this is fully available on microchipdeveloper.com if you want to, to take a look. Excellent. So Jan, you also mentioned a smart human interface earlier. So can we get into the details of that part of the solution? Absolutely. So we have different options here. As I mentioned earlier, we have one of our partner called Motion Gesture. This is specifically recognizing very complex gesture, but you can create your own one. So let's say, you know, for example, we have demos where if you write the M like microchip on the screen, it will do something special. Or you can do the check mark, you can do alpha, thing like that. Again, here, you just have to send one drawing of what you want to recognize to the motion gesture SDK, and they will create the model to recognize that specific gesture. So you cannot make it simpler to implement. And if you want to add a new gesture, you just send a new drawing to motion gesture and you get the library back. So very, very easy to implement and very, very accurate. Where to do so with standard algorithm will take forever. And in some cases, I think it will be even impossible. The other thing we, we are doing is you, now you can do also 3D movement. And that's what we are showing here is you have a board and you can check it, you can create you know, rounds thing, you can go up, down, and it will recognize the movement. So again, this could be a way to interact with a machine or interact with an object. And the last one that I'm showing here is keyword spotting. So it's talking to your car or talking to you know, a machine. But I say here is not to make sentences, but to just keywords. Last time I was, you know, I saw online that someone was controlling a robot saying, you know, go, stop, and things like that, go left, right. That's kind of the idea here is really simple keywords to create an action. All right. So, Jan, if my audience is ready to start working with Microchip's machine learning solutions, where should they start? Microchip is very keen on creating small, low-cost demo boards for people to just play and try. So we have two main ones here that I'm showing based on the SAMD21, which is an M0 Cortex score. And we bundle that with what we call an IMU. And here we have either a TDK or a Bosch version of that. So you can go up and running with all the projects we have posted on microchipdeveloper.com, super easy. The other thing is, if you look at the picture, there's a red board and a green board. So the red board is where you have the SAMD21, the MCU with the Wi-Fi module on it. The green board is from our partner, Microelectronica. And you can swap that board with different type of sensor. And I think they have like 150 or 180 sensor type. So you can reuse that board, but with different type of sensor, maybe more suitable to what you're trying to do. And again, here we have posted on you know, microchipdeveloper.com all the projects that we have. 
They're also available on GitHub. So here is a smart bell I mentioned, the gesture recognition, the keyword spotting, and one more that we have as well is sound recognition. So the first one is to recognize a keyword. The second one is to recognize a sound. So the usual cases are, you know, baby crying or glass breaking for an alarm system. But you can also think a lot of many applications, they want to listen to their products. So let's say you have a big machine running and maybe you want to listen to it to detect a squeak. And you say, okay, if I have a squeak, this means that my bearing is going bad or I need to service it because, you know, need to add some oil or something like that. That's why also sound recognition is a, it's a very popular one. Excellent. Well, Jan, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate the time. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Microchip. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>